The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Grains, CNM Seeds, and Syngenta Canada. Find more episodes of The Wheat School by going to wheatschool.com. Bernard Tobin here on The Wheat School, catching up with Greg Stewart from Syngenta. Greg, how's it going? Morning, Bern. We are going to talk um, biostimulants today on Wheat School, and that's the question for you. Biostimulants in wheat, why? Yeah, why? Well, you know, Peter Johnson's getting pretty old and tired, and I thought a young guy like me could maybe uh, maybe help out on the wheat front a little bit. <laughs> oh, I know he will enjoy that. Hey, let's, let's talk about help. How, you know, in general, how can a biostimulant help the wheat crop? Yeah. It's an excellent question, and it really comes back to the idea of, well, when we're trying to manage a crop, we try to protect it from things that bother the crop, and, and so we're used to killing weeds and killing leaf diseases and controlling insects. Uh, the biostimulant looks more to, okay, what can we add to the crop to actually stimulate its growth, right. improve its growth, narrow the gap between the genetic potential and what it's doing, even in a well-managed field. Yeah. Now you say, you know, uh, I've heard you say this, you know, make sure the crop doesn't have a bad day. Where does, where does it fit? Yeah, yeah. Well, I've sort of stolen that, uh, that phrase from those high yield corn growers yeah. from stateside that we would have up yeah. at our meetings. Uh, but that idea of never let your crop have a bad day. So in that situation, you're really referring to, you know, abiotic stresses hmm. where, like we mentioned, the grower has done everything to sort of give the crop the competitive advantage, but he's still at the mercy of stress that comes from too hot, too cold, too wet, you know, those sort of things. So that's where we try to move in with a biostimulant or at least figure out yeah. how we're going to move in with a biostimulant to improve the crop's ability to handle stresses that come at it all the time. Right. Let's talk about types of biostimulants. There's more yeah. than one. Yeah. Um, give us a quick rundown. Sure. Well, you'd have biostimulants that are aimed at the soil. In fact, probably it all started there, where you'd have biostimulants that looked at trying to improve soil structure, root soil interaction, mm -hmm. right? And then you'd have biostimulants, at least in our camp, we'd have biostimulants that look at the vegetative side of the crop, trying to improve growth rates and, and handle stresses during the vegetative side. And then I think there's biostimulants that are more targeted towards reproductive right. side, where you're actually trying to improve kernel mass, improve physiologically the flow of photosynthate from the leaf to the kernel. So three groups at least, and then products within the biostimulants, well, you can have proteins and complex polysaccharides and, and uh, amino acids. You could have humic acids or other carbon sources, right? Mm -hmm. You can have plant extracts, you know, find a plant that's got some compounds in it that allow it to handle stress, extract those compounds, and put them on an Ontario wheat field to improve yield. And then, of course, the microbial side of it as well, where you'd actually have a living organism trying to produce the stimulative effect. Right. So now, a wide range of possibilities. A wide range. Now, Greg, we are here in Sweeburg, Ontario today, in the middle of a mega foal on-farm trial. Now, one of your biostimulants, right. right? Tell us about, I guess, what you know about this biostimulant and other biostimulants. Yeah, yeah. Well, in this particular product, we are in the biostimulant world that is based on plant extracts, polysaccharides, amino acids, that sort of, there is no living organism. It's not a, it's not a microbial mm -hmm. biostimulant. It's more of the plant extract, polysaccharide side of things. And uh, our, our attempts here is to investigate just what sort of yield improvement can we get if you put down this biostimulant essentially in a tank mix when the grower is already going through the wheat field at T1 or T2, T2 or T3, put the product in and see if we can improve the crop's ability to handle stress and give us some better growth and, and some additional yield. Our data, we don't have a huge data set, we're new in this game, right? But our data set from last year showed about an eight bushel improvement if the grower or in the test sites did a mega full shot at T1, followed by a mega full application at T3. 
That's essentially what we're trying to regenerate, reprove, retest in 2024 is how consistently can we get that yield improvement with those two applications of Megafall T1, T3. Right. And that, that's a big challenge, right? Um, um, the consistency, because as you say, you see, you see those results some places, you don't see it others. You know, that's the question. So, so what do you need to learn more from a perspective on managing it and positioning with growers? Yeah. Well, one of the first things is when we talk to our European colleagues that have been in the, the biostimulant game longer, is that they often say, well, this is not a one and done. This is not spray a weed control product, do the job and move on. This is more of a, a biostimulant that may need multiple applications to get where you want to go. Well, that's a little bit of a, that's a little bit of a change of attitude for us because it sounds a bit like we're selling you, right? right? Oh, well, you need to apply Megafold every time you go through the mm. weed field. Well, we'd like to put the data behind that. Yeah. That is, is it really necessary? to do two applications. And so that's what we're, that's what we're at all about in 2024 is trying to verify the consistency of yield improvement and those two applications or maybe multiple applications are the key to success. Yeah. Let's talk general application here. I mean, you mentioned T1, T3. When you think biostimulants and wheat, what are those key application points? Yeah, I think in wheat, that's our data from last year, a nice yield bump when we went T1 and T3 yeah in the mix. But it really comes back, Burn, to this idea of, so in the biostimulant world, do we want a recipe or do we want a strategy? Do okay. you want me to just say, oh, well, it's always a half a liter at T1 and a half a liter at T3? Or do you have to take a step back and say, well, I've got much more stress now. I've got, I've got a bad forecast, yeah. right? Should we adjust the timing of the biostimulant so that it lines up better with the stress? And that's, again, that's sort of a different approach to biologicals and biostimulants per se is, is it, is it a recipe where you just hit it, you know, yep. the same time? Or should you be more reactive to position the product because you've got different levels of stress in the wheat crop for whatever reason? Final question, Greg, and that is, you know, we've talked about biostimulants and, you know, how they can help manage stress, but hey, Quite often, the biggest stress is weather. Uh, yeah. What do we do with it? Yeah, no kidding. So I, I think that is, the, uh, that is the thing we need to embrace, that we have, we have yields, even good yields that are here. We have genetic potential that is up here. And then that gap is often controlled by the weather. And so it's sort of a new approach to think that we could get some biostimulant type products that would play in that space. Heavens, not to eliminate no. it, but to narrow that gap when other products have done their job and now it's weather that we've got to combat, stresses that we have to combat, and biostimulants can play in that space. I, I, think, I think there's a spot for us in narrowing that yield gap. Awesome. Well, hey, Greg, uh, great conversation about biostimulants. On behalf of Peter Johnson, I want to thank you for helping him out. He, <laughs> he appreciates it. Um, great to have you on Wheat School. We'll see you down the road. Absolutely. Thanks, Bern.